Craig, uh, we've been brought up on teaching defense first. And I ask coaches now, how do they start when they build a team? And I automatically, first few practices, D-zone cover. And then follow it up with moving up the ice from D-zone is the breakout transition, reactive, intuitive to the situation, and then different kinds of attacks, direct attacks. So that's the sequence, but it starts with defensive zone, and then because you got to play games whole ice sooner than later with a new group of people, forecheck. And at the youngest stage levels, I still advocate the one, two, two, and that claw because it gets the picture where they'll spread out enough to see, read, and act, think where they should go, could go at a young age. Craig, in your work, I, I'm wondering about, you take on teams, do you even think about that stuff and let it, or are we spending too much time on it? So I, I journal all my practices, so I can go back and tell you exactly what I did and when I did it. Um, I do a lot of what you're talking about, kind of in like a chalk talk. So we do practice on Tuesday and Thursday, and then Wednesday we do like film, chalk talk, hockey talk, uh, life university, just whatever, um, and then lift afterwards. So I talk on a lot of the stuff off the ice, and then we'll put them in situations that they're doing it on ice rather than kind of like going through a progression like that. Uh, first two weeks, I always do just as many puck touches, weird skating as possible. Um, and I'm a big fan of skating drills with pucks, so puck centered skating. So I have a draw called passing chaos. So it's all about looking and passing. So passing chaos, absolutely vital. So I'm always trying to get them back to feeling normal and feeling like, okay, this is a natural feeling of playing the game. Uh, once I start getting into actual gameplay situations, uh, like I don't have a defined four check. I have, uh, I know Al Ramsey's talked about this. I've got the dog on it. Someone's going after the puck. Then I've got the Fox just kind of feeling it out. And then the Eagle above top. So it's less on one, two, two or two, one, two, whatever you need to accomplish your goal, go for it. Uh, on that kind of stuff. And then I do a lot of like soccer Rondo type drills and like that works its way into penalty kill slash power play rather than just going like straight towards it. So I, I approach every like system from a very concept heavy base and very flexible. The only thing I really ask for is F2 hard to the net and our weak side winger slants across the ice. Other than that, it's very fluid on what you can and cannot do based on the roles and responsibilities, which usually is a shock for players for the first month until they figure it out. And then we tactically dominate. Whether our skills available or not, different question, but from a tactic standpoint, usually we're, we're much better. I mean, this may seem strange. It may seem simple, but uh, Kim, the only time you really one two two is on a change or maybe a dump in maybe but usually when you dump it in you're changing and that means you come out of the box first second third and that's why the shape of where am i going to go if i'm first is obvious i'm pressuring i'm steering where's two and three going to go once you get possession after that, on direct attack, you follow through with 2-1-2. Two, two. You don't think 1-2-2. Two, two. So the only time, and this is in my mind, the only time you start out is when you change. And you don't dump it in and forecheck anymore. You dump it in and change. So I don't know if this makes sense or not, Kim, but... The one two two is huge because when I worked with uh, U8s trying to learn whole ice hockey before the rule change, they just swarmed. Like 
you could put a an umbrella over all five players. But once we introduce this claw, they cut the ice in half. They they were spread out and they were able to think first, second, third, one, two, three. If you can play the if you can count to three, you can play the game. So you get out of this right winger, left winger, center mentality, which is robotic. But to me, relative to the four check, I even look at, okay, you got this torpedo. Well, that's basically a 2 2 1 when you're really aggressive. And it would be the offensive defenseman who would be up more than the other one. And I, I think the way the game's going, both sides are going to be offensive. I don't know if the pairings in the NHL are going to, are typically one defensive D and one obviously offensive D. But the game that's evolving, I think, is, is really the interchangeability. But when kids grow up to think, to think the game, and you learn to think without the puck in terms of where you should go, and possessing it is more important because when you have it, they they can't do anything with it, but they got to try to get it back. So as we talked about earlier, it's transition is the game within the game. Greg? So, Wally, I've got a few points to follow up on that. 